Thank you for clicking on this video. I appreciate it and you. This painting is called Deconstruct Form, if you care to know. If you like this painting, please consider checking out my other videos. Um, that is, if you like torture. With that said, this is the second faceless painting I was making reference to in my previous video where I painted Inner Diatribe, that's what that was called. This depicts another sort of disquiet and unease signature. I can only describe it as yellow wallpaper in the bottomy-esque tear, or maybe horror, that old horror of reality slash existing. The colors are much darker, so the image appears richer, more saturated, to me at least in person. I, for the second time, incorporated black into the body, so that adds to the contrast yet creates an interesting clarity. I've done it before, however that was years ago when I hadn't gotten into my refinement or exercise self-restraint so much. Maybe now it's to compensate for the lack of face to focus on. My only regret is about the teeth I improvised at the top that wasn't part of the concept sketch initially, but I really craved a toothy feature. I really craved the toothy feature in my previous painting too, but I, I fought the urge. I fought it, because I'm strong. Um, <laughs> Switching gears. Save for my birthday vlog video, I've painted and filmed every day. And yesterday, the 31st of October, I consulted my tarot card deck about the prospect of another video. I was a little worried because it deviates from, like, painting. But the tarot card deck, it's the one by um, Dakota Cates, um, Wizard Barge. I really like the illustrations. I really connect with the deck way more than the other one. Anyway, focusing. The deck told me first thing. I was overworked, and I was like, that was not my question. You know, I said to myself, that's a lie. It says some other stuff to me too, but the second to last card was the fool, so that's when I knew it wasn't a lie. Because I am a fool, you know. I always get the fool card, I feel like. The thing about me and overworking, though, slash, like, being a workaholic, is that it doesn't feel like work. Painting, drawing, filming, um, a writing. Like, when I create things, I do get into, like, a feverish sort of mode. But it's, like, really great. But it's, like, it kind of puts me on the brink sometimes. But it's, like, I, I just, I feel great. I feel great. There's no other way for me to, like, live it up. <laughs> if you get what I mean? I don't know. It reminded me, though, that I'm a bit compulsive. For a long time, I really feared I had, like, an addictive trait. But, like, lo and behold, it's more of, like, a, a compulsive trait that I, I, I can now put my finger on it. Um, I think they're similar but different. But, uh, enough about myself and my neuroses. This painting has a three-song soundtrack. If I had to pick three to really epitomize it. Kissing You by Desiree for the transcendence. That song is so, her voice is so, I love women with like dark, deep voices in a way. Like it's just like, oh, sultry. It's beautiful. The production, it's, it's just like, it really, it really is a um, what, what, reverie. Reverie? No, that's not the word. It's really, um, oh my God. I see the word in my mind, but I can't say it. Oh my God. If it comes back to me. What, what, I can't, it's not coming to me. I'll move on. Second song is When You Believe, Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey. Not because it's the greatest song of all time, but because I really need the optimism. I put a little bit of optimism into this painting, taking a chance every time I paint though, but this one I felt like was really, really a gamble. And third, Dermot Kennedy's Innocence and Sadness. It's a bit self-explanatory, that last one. I really love Dermot Kennedy. His voice is wonderful. His writing is wonderful. Anywho, focusing again, shifting gears. On the point of yellow wallpaper, yes, someone else is neuroses now. I can only relate to neurodivergent people I've noticed. Even with content creators, like, the main people that I watch, and I don't really watch, like, people-esque channels. I watch, like, 
other artist channels, ASMR, food channels, I guess, music content, whatever, other stuff. It's not really person-centric, but the ones I do watch, like Pixie Locks, Blake Homey, and Ash, I think she goes by Ash Armada on, on other platforms. Anyway, The Yellow Wallpaper, the short story by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. It was the first short story I believe I ever read. After that, it was Pyramus and Thisbe, the original Romeo and Juliet, from Babylonian times. But both were school signed. And I really, I, I don't like the U.S. school system as like an institution. I think reform is very much needed, but I cherish the knowledge because it gave me a sense of direction. With my feelings about the teachings as a tool to like further navigate from the school starting point. I love learning. I do. Like I want to know so much about everything. At least like creatively. Eartha Kitt said that like the quote, the quote, paraphrasing it, was that her diploma would be her tombstone. I echo that sentiment so much it is tattooed on my leg. <laughs> I started school at six rather than five because I have a fall birthday. So for so long, I felt like knowledge was being withheld from me exclusively by something so stupid as time, which I don't, I don't have a good sense of, if you can't tell. Ever since then, I've always wanted to get to the bottom of things. Guts, if you will. That's another video reference. Also, maybe the bottom of the truth. But this, in this painting, I investigate my truth in a way I think I am swank. Yes, very much so. I can do it because I've seen it done. This painting, like many others, feels like one I've done before. Although, I think that's because my work is very fluid. And swank was a reference to Maya Angelou. A little biopic, I think it was. Well, no, it was probably an autobiography sort of documentary thing. Because she was there and Common was there. And she's like, I saw a woman on the trolley, and she thought she was swank, so I got me a job on the trolley. And I'm like, oh yes, oh yes, swank, I am. <laughs> it's how I live, it's the only way. Anyway, if you take anything at all away from this, it is art, truly art. I'm so sorry I ramble. Thank you for watching if you made it to the end. One more thing. Absolutely, one more thing, the last thing. Love's exquisite freedom. That was how Maya Angelou intertwined that. Because as I said, the transcendence of kissing you by Desiree. There's a, when I first read Love's exquisite freedom, I was not necessarily really moved by it. Because there's something, it's a very simple thing. It was sort of like a picture book, but also like poetry. And I was really, I'm not going to lie, underwhelmed by it. But now that I'm older and I've had more time to mull it over. I never did so long ago. I really want to say I was probably maybe like 12 or 11 when I came across it. And I thought it was going to be like something really grand. But it was like very simple. But as I've, like I said, as I've gotten older, there's something very extravagant about it. And the freedom of it. Like the notion that within love that there is freedom. Continuing my mindset and, or like extending my thought that art is a lover. I think it, I think it makes sense. But my mind is... Uh, I, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. That's fine.